Hi, my name is Vanessa with UT Physicians, and I'm going to demonstrate what to expect when getting an arm cast and a few extra tips. First, we'll start by applying the undercast padding, which is your stockinette and your web roll. That just acts as a barrier in between the skin and the fiberglass portion of the cast, which is the hard part. Now you will feel a little tension, not too tight, but a cast is made to fit snug. So make sure that we are properly immobilizing your fracture or tear, rupture, whatever injury you have. Now I'm going to apply the fiberglass portion of the cast. This material does heat up a little bit. It's a normal sensation that you will feel. It's only temporary as the cast cures and hardens. And you always wanna try your very best just to hold completely still throughout the process so that you avoid creating indentions in the cast, which can become bothersome. Also, we have to get a mold as well. Um, so you will feel a little bit of pressure, but this mold is necessary to ensure that we're properly mobilizing your extremity uh, where your injury is at to eliminate further injury. In the short arm cast, you should still be able to bring your fingers down and be able to move your thumb around. At the ends of the cast, we have that cast padding to help protect your skin from the edges of the fiberglass. Now, a few cast care tips that you're gonna want to remember is that you need to keep this cast dry. We're not worried about the outside of the cast getting wet. The fiberglass portion is okay. What we're really worried about is the inside of the cast. If your cast gets wet on the inside, that creates a lot of moisture and what can end up happening is your skin inside can start to macerate. So we want to avoid that. You gotta give us a call, let us know so that way we can change it out for you. You can get a blow dryer on the cold setting, try to dry it out as much as you can in the meantime until you get to us. You also wanna make sure that you elevate your arm as much as you can and elevating up high, over, don't leave it hanging down, what can happen is you'll have increased pain and swelling, which we want to avoid. So elevate as much as you can. And another thing that you can monitor your fingers, make sure they're normal color, size, and temperature. If that has changed, that's a, another indication of increased swelling and you gotta elevate to help bring that down. Another big tip, don't stick anything down the cast to scratch. That's something that a lot of people tend to do. It's risky because what can end up happening is you can break the skin and that'll increase risk for infection. Like especially if you've previously had a surgery done, you're pushing in more added dirt and bacteria, increasing your risk for infection. So don't stick anything down the cast. To scratch, another thing that that can do is it can end up bunching up the cotton inside and that bunched up cotton can end up creating a pressure ulcer on your extremity. Now during your follow-up visit, when you come back to have your cast removed, we use a cast saw. So this saw works through pure oscillation. The blade doesn't rotate, it just vibrates, it makes a lot of noise, but all you're gonna feel is a lot of vibration and maybe just a little bit of heat. And before I remove the cast from my patient, I do like to show them that it's completely safe by giving it a few taps on my hand when it's on. Now that it's cut, we're ready to crack it open with the cast spreaders. Now we're ready to cut it off. See, and all this undercast padding that we put in prior to the fiberglass acts as that 
protection berm in between the cast saw and your skin as well. So it's another thing you want to make sure that you don't pick the cotton out with. Some patients do tend to do with time. So remember, we need that cotton in place to protect your skin from the cast saw. Thank you for watching. We do hope that you found these videos helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us. We're here for you.